Body count lottery rounded out to a solid and sturdy 30. 10 out of Haywood. Thanks to unabated gang wars. One officer down, so I guess you're all screwed. Because the NCPD will not let that go. Got another blackout in Santo Domingo. Netrunners are at it again, poking holes in the power grid. While over in Westbrook, trauma teams scraping cyber psycho victims off the pavement. And in Pacifica, well, Pacifica is still Pacifica. This has been your man, Stan. Join me for another day in our city of dreams. Cyberpunk 2077 is a breathtaking, immersive, open-world journey that seeks its hooks into you from start to finish. When it's not being let down by its numerous technical bugs and performance issues, it's an open-world experience that I came back to time and time again and was quite sad when I had to eventually roll those end credits. Before we dive deep into Night City, however, let's lay some ground rules for this review. Number one, the last gen ports of this game are unacceptable, it kind of goes without saying at this point, the performance I've seen over on the base PS4 and Xbox One are abhorrent, and CDPR should be ashamed of themselves for hiding it. Two, I ran the Xbox Series X version of the game footage you see on screen. Thus, why my performance and gameplay issues may differ a little bit from everyone else. So, if there's certain bugs or things you guys are running into on your side, whether it be PS5, PC, or base consoles, just know that my experience and a lot of other people's are going to be quite different than what everyone else is experiencing. And lastly, this is a multi part review. We will not discuss the main or side stories due to this game being very fresh. Upon completion of the game, I had an achievement tell me I was part of the 3.4% of people that finished the game and only 0.94% of people that finished a certain side quest line to completion. So I think it's only fair to hold off on exploring stories and themes and stuff of that nature until a later date because no one has really finished it or even finished up certain side quests and plot threads and things of that nature. For now, let's just focus on the world building, a brief light story fluff, and the presentation, art style, as well as the gameplay for part one of this review. All right, let's get into it. In Cyberpunk 2077, you have the option to choose between three different origin stories, the Nomad, Corpro, and Street Kid routes. I chose the Street Kid, a rough and tough guy who grew up in the underbelly of Night City, and from the jump, always wanted more out of the city, and was willing to do whatever it took to make it big as a mercenary. After some character customization and a brief origin setup that took around two hours to complete, the game opens up the Pandora's box that his Night City and you're welcome to explore such a chaotic world. The gameplay is surprisingly in-depth for an FPS RPG. There's a multitude of builds you can create, custom tailored to whatever you're gunning for throughout the campaign. I went for a solo build. My guy could gunsling at nobody's business, had the fastest draw this side of Night City. Pistol reload speed was 60% faster across all the pistols and revolvers that I picked up all while being able to shoot accurately while jumping, sprinting, and sliding. Couple that with my above average melee combat and augmentations that could let me double jump, slow down time while aiming down sight today, myriad of other combat enhancing abilities, and let's just say I was more than cut out for some good old head to head or gunslinging combat. Speaking of which, guns in enemy combat is surprisingly fluid and robust in its variety. Guns are wide in array, there are tons of power weapons, you know, the ones that use good old live in ammunition, sometimes infused with special attributes like chemical bullets or firepower that sets baddies ablaze. Others are tech weapons. These can be used to see enemies through walls and often pack an electric punch, frying and stunning implants during combat. They can also let you charge them a little bit before letting lead fly, which can further add to the amount of damage you'll be outputting from the weapon. Weapon types are a plenty too. Revolvers, shotguns, machine guns, assault rifles, basic pistols, snipers, the works. Not to mention some of these guns can have smart variants which coupled with a smart link allows any of these types of weapons minus precision rifles and snipers to become essentially mini rocket launchers that can curve around walls and light up bad guys like it's Christmas morning. Guns are very rewarding to use and have deep customization allowing you to mod and kit each weapon out to fit your playstyle. You can slap a silencer and a long scope on a revolver perfect for sneaking around shady hideouts and dishing out one tap headshots or you can go guns blade 
blazing with a shotgun that sets flesh on fire and mows through crowds of enemies like it's no one's business. The game allows for tons of freedom in your solo build regard. Maybe guns aren't your thing though, I'm hearing. Okay, that's cool. You can run a melee build, tons of weapons to choose from there as well. Katanas, baseball bats, knives, etc. I think you guys get the gist by now. These can also be modded for your liking, whether you want to have infusions of bleeding or once again fire and chemical outputs, it's all up to you by finding the right mods and augmentations to make the weapons fit your playstyle. And again, maybe getting your hands dirty doesn't suit you at all. That's cool as well. You can actually hack your way through everyone and everything. That's the Netrunners build. They rely heavily on augmented upgrades and abilities that can be as simple as making people's guns jam, all the way up to frying people's memories and forcing the AI out of combat state so you can walk right into enemy territory like no one even knew you were there. The endless amount of ways you can approach encounters never ceases to impress me. I also really like how you can gear class builds to be that jack of all trades to do a little bit of everything just like a tabletop game. The enemy variety doesn't slouch either. There's the typical gang members and grunts you fight, some using melee weapons, some using guns, but there's also some special cases. Armored guys, drones, robots, mini mechs, net runners that can jack your system and blind you or overheat your systems, and tons of other gameplay that makes it a constantly evolving experience. The gunplay is also surprisingly sublime. Punchy sound effects and jaw-dropping, mouth-watering reload animations just sell how powerful the iron you wield is. Got no time to creep around. Mission design is also key for any of these types of games. It can't just be fetch quest after fetch quest. And thankfully, CP2077 does a really strong job of making sure a majority of gigs and side quests are layered and unique. One minute you're looking through a brain dance, piecing together clues of an attack, the next is just spent talking to people, gathering info, all leading up to a climactic final quest where you go and infiltrate something or sometimes just avoid the altercation completely. Both the main and side quests are multi layered and all in intertwine in shaping up your ending of the game. The mission locales and objectives change constantly and feel fresh all while having an emotional and compelling plot lines that kept me coming back to learn more and more about the surroundings around me. All of this really means nothing unless the way from getting to point A to point B is fun and thankfully driving is pretty good. Cars that look like clunkers, they're gonna control like clunkers. Turning corners and braking, they feel as unresponsive as the car is gonna look. While sports cars tear up tarmac at blistering speeds and have the grace and cornering of a sloth, meaning very, very difficult to pull off. For me, nothing beat the good old motorcycles as whipping around corners and squeezing in between traffic felt gratifying to pull off as I raced through Night City. Only complaint, I really wish you could bust out your revolver or pistol or another small weapon and started shooting from your motorcycle or car. That would have made for some really awesome drive-by antics and also no willies in the motorcycle cycles all seems like very missed opportunities over at CDPR. Despite those small nitpicks, it really is a testament to the game that it went out of its way to create such an immersive cyberpunk open world experience that in my opinion is very well achieved and exceeded my expectations. It's a blast to explore, thrilling to shoot weapons in, and I love how it stays true to its first person view from the gun inspect animations right up to normal dialogue conversations. It achieved its goal in making me feel like I'm in V shoes in this corrupt yet somehow beautiful city. Okay, let's get to the part you guys are really waiting for. Night City is a dirty, magnificent, and wacky all at the same time locale to explore. The streets are crowded both with people, corrupt gangs, and all sorts of stuff you either have to turn a blind eye from or take on head first, all at the same time with corporations plastering their disgusting intrusive ads and exploiting everyone in town. Each district is very distinct in its feel and thankfully the highway and road system does a awesome job of making exploration feel familiar and grounds you in the game's reality. The draw distance especially left me in awe. When you're looking out at certain vistas, it felt like watching a bustling city at work. Tons of goodies and side gigs are tucked away in very obvious alleyways and some are harder to find spots way out in the boonies, really rewarding your exploration of the map. 
character animations are also a cut above the rest for once in a western RPG. They don't do the same canned move hands a bit while talking and stop during dialogue. Characters are natural, ask for smokes mid combo, take shots talking at the bar, have natural movements when positioning themselves during drawn out convos, and they really did an outstanding job of making characters come to life. And again, when they're not bugging out or skipping over dialogue and talking over each other, it is a really fun and awesome journey to take part in. The soundtrack to this game is in incredible on a quick side note it is absolutely some of the best cyberpunk music i've heard i love all these synths and even strings and things that just play throughout it and the emotions that the ost conveys hits all the narrative beats and really hammers home how great this game is and on top of that the car music that plays when you're riding around even though it could use a couple more tracks for each station is still very exquisite stuff i often found myself actually listening to the in-game car radio music and not just turning it off and putting on my own playlist like I usually tend to do with these kinds of open world games. 10 out of 10 stuff in that regard as well. What I'm getting at is exploring Night City when things work is a 9 to almost 10 out of 10 experience if I were to give it a score. Sadly though, that's not really the reality now, is it? Yes, there are a couple of people like me who didn't experience too many bugs, blurry textures, or any of those issues that many people are facing with Cyberpunk 2077. Personally, my playthrough was pretty much just fine. I ran into a couple of mini crashes that happened when I opened up my minimap, and other than the absolutely horrid police AI, I had a really fun time with the game and didn't run into too many big game breaking things. But let's just be honest, these cases are few and far between. It is abhorrent over on the base consoles as shown and stated previously. The PC version with the recent hotfix seems to be even more broken than it already was and there is just way too many game breaking issues on the PlayStation consoles that I can't even begin to number them in this video. I mean we're talking people are crashing during scripted segments or getting soft locks out of the game and cannot progress during the Johnny Turret section. There are so many issues that need fixing, need addressing need patching and on top of that there's just straight up cut content that isn't even in the game how do you have trailers showing that you can shoot out of your car while driving and sliding and all that and that's nowhere to be seen in the game how do you have to talk about all these lifestyles and how much they'll feed into the game's environment and change the world around you but it's actually just a tiny 30 minute mission with a super spliced together montage and nothing aside from a couple of dialogue trees during certain story beats. This is the type of stuff that leaves a lot of players underwhelmed and rightfully so. I think the game was just a bit too ambitious on top of having way too many cooks in the kitchen and making it available for pretty much every single console possible just felt always like it wasn't going to end well in my eyes. So yeah, I'm just disappointed to say the least with Cyberpunk's overall launch. It's just needs a lot more cooking to be done and the absolute betrayal of our trust in the community is insane and I can't forgive them for that. If I were to rate Cyberpunk due to the fact that it's so buggy and the current state it did on a multitude of platforms, I have no choice but to give it a 6 out of 10. It is unplayable for certain people and there's just way too many moving parts that make the game unfun to play. However, if you do somehow get a magic copy like mine where things are working and you only run into a couple bugs here and there and they're more funny than annoying, then yeah, personally it's an 8 to 9 out of 10 title if I were to give it a score. And what I'm saying is I really enjoy Enjoyed it. I really liked my time with the game and I had a blast exploring Night City and interacting with the characters and cannot wait to go back in there and explore the world and lore and characters once again and really sink my teeth into all the different possible pathways and trees. I'm already learning about some stuff online that I completely missed and could have learned that my playthrough could have easily gone from a simple 30 to 40 hours all the way up to 70 to 80 depending on which different pathways I take. It, it's insane but alas that isn't going to be everyone's experience and again at the same time it's so unplayable in its current state so do i recommend cyberpunk 2077 of course i absolutely do uh next year just purchase the game 
already when it hits that bargain bid, already when it's on clearance or on sell in 2021. Save your money right now. Focus on getting some games that are a little bit more up your alley and buy up all the awesome 2020 games we have on sale with Doobie Turtle, Hades, Ghost of Tsushima. You guys get the gist. Save your money for games like that and wait for Cyberpunk to get fixed up and hopefully it gets a No Man's Sky-esque revival where they do start adding some of the cut content from the game and really flesh it out and just make it function. Even if it cost it only being on next gen some of these features and i completely 100 percent understand that because it's honestly time to let the base consoles fall to the wayside well that's gonna do it for the cyberpunk 2077 review if you guys enjoy you know what to do leave a like comment and subscribe down below i'm curious to hear what your guys' thoughts are on cyberpunk 2077 and i will see you guys for the next video have a great day peace